Shalom. This is Amir Tsarfati and I am live on YouTube from the third largest city in Israel, from the city of Haifa, with 300,000 people that live in this beautiful city. The most famous icon of the city is the Baha'i Gardens, which is right behind me. This is nighttime, it's hard to see, but at daytime, those are beautiful gardens that go all the way from the top of Mount Carmel down towards the Mediterranean and it's right above me um, and um, we're here in this amazing place. I'm on the rooftop of Ebenezer home. This is the place for elderly people that are believers in Jesus amongst the Jews and Arabs and non-Jews here in this uh, country. The only one that I know of and uh, an amazing place and amazing people. About 30 people live here and uh, the common thing is not only that they all reached a certain age where they moved into this place, but they all love Jesus and they all believe in Him as their personal Lord and Savior. So this is it. We're in Israel. We're in the city of Haifa. And I am so proud that we, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ here in this place. So let's start with a short prayer and uh, continue with our special update on the background to the decision of President Trump to pull out of Syria. So Father, we thank you so much that you are a God that loves your children and you do not want to hide your plans from your children. Father, your plans are always visible to us through the words of your prophets. You said in the book of Amos chapter 3 that you surely will not do anything unless you reveal your plans to your prophets. And we thank you, Father, that you said through the prophet Isaiah that uh, you are God, there is no other, you are God, there is none like you, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. And you say that your will, uh, your will be done and you will do all your pleasure. So, Father, uh, help us to understand that you're in full control with all the chaos that is going on in this world. People may not know you, people think they are so smart, but you know everything and you want your children to find rest and to find comfort in your word and in your promises. We thank you when we bless your name this evening from Haifa, from the city of Haifa in the land of Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So again, shalom everyone. Um, so um, a few days ago, the world was shocked, shocked to hear that President Trump uh, decided to pull the American troops out of Syria. I was live on Facebook when the rumors from Washington came. The minute I ended up my uh, update on Facebook, President Trump tweeted, that our job in Syria is finished, ISIS is defeated, and that was the only reason we were there. Um, and of course, uh, I'm not a prophet. I, we had sources over there that already knew it's going to happen. We know of a very interesting con phone conversation that was between President Trump and President Erdogan of Turkey that led to that decision. And we're going to talk about it in just a few seconds. But you need to understand one important thing. Certain things are happening around the world. And as they happen, the people that make those decisions look at them as the best decision for their people at that moment. And you have to also understand that as much as America may love Israel or support Israel, and as much as uh, President Trump is probably the most pro-Israeli leader the White House ever had, you must understand that he is not knowingly uh, doing anything to hurt or harm Israel. And um, if anything, you will hear in a few seconds that the decision to pull out of Syria was actually to allow Israel to have a much better freedom to deal with Iran and for even America to deal with, with the ag Iranian aggression. Uh, just so you know, for the first time since 
2001, for the first time, an American air, aircraft carrier had entered the Persian Gulf. This is unprecedented, at least in the last um, 17, 17 years. We also know that, um, that um, a two bills were passed today. President Trump signed two bills that are going to play a very significant role in fighting Hezbollah and Hamas, and that is, of course, to boycott or to sanction any organization that is using humans as shields. And that, of course, is direct towards Hamas and Hezbollah, because Hezbollah, in his attempt to destroy or to attack Israel, is using civilian homes to dig tunnels and to um, harbor rockets. And Hamas is doing the same by shooting rockets from civilian areas. So President Trump, side by side by, with pulling out of his troops from Syria, is taking some actions that no other president since 2001 uh, had taken. And you must understand that there are calculated moves in this whole thing. Now, let's go back to 2014. President Barack Hussein Obama is understanding that ISIS is sowing fear and terror and havoc all around the Middle East. And President Obama understands that he cannot have too many boots on the ground. He's sending a small task force, small task force of roughly 2,000 consultants to uh, eastern Syria, and he's sending them to help the democratic army of, free army of Syria. There is really nothing true in that name. Syria is not democratic, it's not exactly a free, and uh, army, it's not, it's more malicious. But he's sending them to gather, basically, the Kurds and their allies to fight ISIS. Instead of America fighting ISIS, they were supposed to help train and consult the Kurds to fight ISIS. The charter, the mandate that was given to the American troops had absolutely nothing to do with neither Iran nor with the Hezbollah, nor with any Shiite militias. It had all to do with fighting the Sunni terrorist organization called ISIS. And that is important that you understand that because America was never in Syria to stop Iran. America was never in Syria to do the job for Israel. Israel, in the past three years, when we dealt with the Iranian at entrenchment. Israel did not need America, nor ask for help from America, nor did America do the job for Israel. So you must put things in the right perspective. 2,000 consultants only, yes, military equipment, yes, military um, advisors are on the ground, but you have to understand their job was only to put together a one force that will fight ISIS. Now, ISIS is not completely defeated, but now comes the point that you all must carefully listen to. Ladies and gentlemen, um, when President Obama sent the American advisors to Syria, he did that to achieve two things. One, to fight ISIS, and two, to help the, the Shiites, the Iranians and their militias to basically take over that area of ISIS. And basically, it was anti-Sunni, pro-Shiite um, um, a policy. Now, you must remember that um, uh, President Trump is the one that pulled out of the Iran deal. President Trump is the one that imposed sanctions on Iran. President Trump was all about fighting the Iranian aggression, the Iranian entrenchment, and the Iranian deception. However, he was captured by his own Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, in that concept that he must collaborate with the Shiites in the fight against uh, uh, ISIS. And he didn't like it. He never liked it. 
He didn't understand how come I fight Iran in the international arena, how come I fight Iran with the nuclear deal, and now I have to collaborate with them and their militias when it comes to ISIS. So he always tried to find a way out of this thing. He couldn't do that, and not until President Erdogan started telling uh, the world, basically, I'm done with the, the way the Kurds are, are doing things. I am going to fight the Kurds no matter what. President Trump was uh, um, arranged um, a phone call and he was given a whole uh, uh, list of, uh, of points that he needs to talk with Erdogan about and demands that he needs to demand Erdogan uh, to do. And uh, very interestingly, uh, President Erdogan says to President Trump, why, President Trump, why are you there at all? Aren't you against Iran? Aren't you against the deal? Aren't you against what they do? How come you're still there helping them instead of fighting them? And uh, President uh, Trump is pausing and he's asking his national security advisor, John Bolton, why are we still there? And is ISIS almost defeated? John Bolton says, yes, Mr. President, ISIS is almost defeated. And, uh, and then President Erdogan says, I can finish the job for you. I, you don't have to be there. Let me do the job for you. And you can just pull out. Because, you, yep, you must understand, this is a promise, election promise of President Trump. I'm going to pull the troops out. For the longest time, President Trump has been telling along his campaign, we've been spending billions in the Middle East. We've been spending so many uh, lives of soldiers, uh, wasting lives of soldiers in the Middle East. And for the most part, in countries that don't even love us or appreciate us. Let's not do that anymore. That was his campaign uh, slogan for the longest time. So nobody should be um, surprised that that's the policy that President Trump took. Now, you must understand, folks, that um, he was not able to pull his soldiers out as long as he was in that concept that we must fight ISIS. When he realized that there are some problems in this uh, deal, he wanted a way out, and Erdogan gave him that ladder right away. Now, by the way, Erdogan was shocked as much as all the advisors of President Trump were shocked that he immediately decided it's time to pull out of Syria. Now, let me understand something. I know that all of you are very, very concerned about the Kurds, and I know that uh, Europe is very concerned about ISIS, and I know that uh, a lot of people and the media is very concerned, and they also ma try to make sure that um, that Israel is very concerned. But but you must understand something. Um, President Trump, and now comes uh, something that many of you don't even know that President Trump in the last few months received more and more American intelligence uh, uh, communiques, uh, both from uh, known sources and, 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 from, and, and from secret sources, that he realized that the Kurds are actually having um, connection and contacts and, and uh, official ones with Bashar al-Assad's regime in the last few months. They're actually willing to receive Bashar al-Assad's um, sovereignty over them, they already started actually selling him the gas and oil. And he literally saw that the Kurds, Bashar, and the Shiites are collaborating together. In other words, under the guise of fighting ISIS, a new coalition is being formed. And that's not why America was there. America was not there to bring Bashar al-Assad to be stronger, to bring Iran to be stronger, and to make everybody else rich. America was there to fight ISIS. When they realize that instead of fighting ISIS, they're actually making business with Bashar al-Assad 
and becoming friends with the Shiites and the Iranians, President Trump realized that he is being deceived, just like a lot of other people were deceived by the Kurds. And, and you have to understand, I think that the Kurds were, are very courageous people. They are the only ones who fought ISIS. There's no doubt about it. But the Kurds have always been very, very divided. And, and they always realize, and by the way, you, you, you must give it to them. They understand that they're surrounded by Syria and Turkey and Iran and Iraq. They understand if they want to survive, they can't lean on America. They have to somehow create alliances with the locals. And obviously, if ISIS is their bitter enemy, what is better than having alliance with Iran or with Bashar al-Assad? And this is exactly what President Trump realized. He's being taken advantage by them. He realized that the Kurds are actually um, um, a temporary thing. And at some point, they're going to join the Shiite axis just like they did in Iraq. In Iraq, they did that. And he realized that leaning on them is not going to be a very wise thing. You also must understand that America only had 2,000 troops there that are actually more of advisors. They are not capable of doing more than little surgical um, operations, and that's it. And by the way, the big one was in February when more than 600 Russian mercenaries were trying to get to the oil fields uh, in, of eastern across the Euphrates, and they were all killed by the American special forces there. But I need you to understand Ladies and gentlemen, the decision of President Trump was a pure anti-Iranian slash anti-Shiite decision. He realized I cannot lean on the Kurds because it's not just ISIS here. ISIS is almost completely defeated. Now, Europe is afraid of ISIS. So Europe is angry that President Trump is pulling out. But what did President Trump just tweeted? President Trump just said, if you want, why don't you go and fight? How come you don't send your soldiers? Why is America there to fight your wars? We have defeated the ISIS that was big and strong and was threatening the world. It is small. It is very insignificant at this point. And uh, yes, they're still there. There's about 5,000 of them. But uh, by the way, if you want, you can go and fight. Uh, if you don't, then don't lecture me. Uh, Erdogan wants to come and fight them. It's fine with me. That's what he said. Now, the media turn it all around. Now, make no mistake. I'm not thrilled with America not being there. But I do understand President Trump's position. In fact, it's the smartest thing for him to do. And it's not that bad after all for Israel. And let me explain why. Now, America feels like Israel feels very vulnerable. Now, America will back Israel in every Israeli operation against Iran or Hezbollah in the north. And now Iran was put on notice and Hezbollah was put on notice. The sanctions against the Hezbollah and the Lebanese government are on their way already. President Trump could not sanction Lebanon because he was still captured in that concept that he has to help the Lebanese army. Whereas the Lebanese army, by the way, is almost completely a puppet of the Hezbollah. Now, when he's no longer in Syria, when he's no longer having to collaborate with the Shiites anymore, when it's no longer his business, he can surely sanction the Hezbollah and he can surely continue his pressure on Iran and the oil prices that have gone all the way down to $45 a barrel and they keep plunging. They are his best weapon. This is why, by the way, the, the Iranians are not thrilled to go to a war at this point because they understand their, their pockets are empty right now. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're looking at is not a very, um, uh, I was a crazy move of a crazy person. It's a very well calculated move of a president that understand that you can't dance in those two parties. 
you either you're against Iran and you put your you pull all your forces against the Shiite expansion and the shenanigans of Hezbollah or you're with them but you cannot be against them here and with them there because that will not allow you to do what you need to do that's why by the way Israel is not completely freaking out right now we all understand the situation it's not nice not to have the Americans across the Euphrates but hey the Euphrates is is almost a uh, I don't know 800 miles away from Israel we <laughs> The American advisors there never helped Israel to begin with. Um, America is still holding air bases in Iraq. America is still holding a uh, military presence in other places around the Middle East. And America is fully uh, committed to help Israel at this point. Now let's pause. I just explained President Trump's um, reasoning behind his uh, decision. Now let me explain what I see the chain reaction to this decision is going to be. There's no doubt that the Russians are now going to say, hey, ISIS is not over yet. We will go in and help fighting ISIS. Obviously their goal is to get to the oil and to the gas over there. The Turks are getting closer and closer. The Iranians are feeling if America is out, it's our chance to move forward, to move in. And what we see biblically and prophetically is that the ring is getting tighter and tighter with those three countries towards Israel. Now, maybe President Trump, and for sure he means well for himself and also for Israel, don't be mistaken. But eventually what I see prophetically that is going to happen, and by the way, militarily, we know that uh, it's just a matter of time until that assault, that war is going to, to, to take place. I believe that we are watching a major, major step forward towards a coming war in the Middle East involving Russia, Turkey, and Iran using Syria as their playground and coming towards Israel. So that's how I see things. I had to clarify the, the reason behind President Trump's decision. I also wanted you to understand that America wants, uh, America does what America needs to do for America. President Trump is not the Prime Minister of Israel. He was not elected to make Israel great again. He was elected by Americans to make America great again. And for him, time to take care of the border wall, time to take care of our own safety and security of our borders with Mexico, time to take care of domestic problems. And therefore, he is willingly allowing the Turks to take over the reins in eastern Syria and fight the rest or the leftovers of ISIS. And I, we all know it's not going to be good, it's not going to be nice, it's not going to be pretty, but this is the Middle East. That's what is going to happen. So on one hand, I'm excited to see as a Bible believer what is happening. And on the other hand, I also understand the reason behind decisions like that. Now. At the beginning, I didn't like it until I was exposed to all of the reasoning behind it, to all of the, the issues that he had to, to take in consideration. And then, of course, after all, I don't think it's such a bad thing for Israel by itself. Now, a lot of people are angry and a lot of people are, 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 are very much surprised. How can President Trump do that? Blah, blah, blah. Folks. <laughs> you have to understand, even if President Trump would have brought the entire American military to be in Syria, Ezekiel 38 would still be taking place. So let's not be mistaken. World events as described in the, uh, the books of the prophets will take place no matter what. Now, it is maybe uh, important for us to understand that... Um, any decision of any world leader to do whatever it is will not change the fact that that war will take place. What we see is an American president that is doing amazing things for Israel, 
but unknowingly is accelerating the, 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 the events and the process of things towards the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39. So this is it, folks. That's the short update on the behind the scenes of the decision to pull out the soldiers. It, it, it won't happen overnight. It will still set, take some time. But I can tell you one thing, folks. Um, ISIS decided to immediately resurge and to take uh, two-thirds of the city of Hajin. Um, now uh, America is uh, helping uh, the Kurds to fight them back. But America, is, is, it's, a, it's a done deal. The decision was made. Uh, President Trump is so determined. This is exactly why General Mattis and the special coordinator to the fight against ISIS both resigned. And the, the, the resignation is not such a bad thing because uh, as far as Israel is concerned, Mattis was not a good, uh, good news. He was captivated in that progressive thinking that... Um, uh, helping or aiding Iran in uh, in Syria is actually, or in Lebanon, it's actually a good thing. So this is it, folks. I wanted you to understand that what is behind the scenes. Uh, we are living in exciting times, amazing times, and I just wanted you to all get the right picture, the full picture of events. We will conclude this one right now, and in just about four minutes, we're going to start our Bible study on Unto Us a Child Was Born. Thank you, God bless you, and Shalom from Haifa, from Israel. Bye-bye.